Recently, 50 Cent and Mary J. Blige went on a show to talk about what the roles are going to be in power. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a look at what they had to say, and then me and Larry are going to break it down. Let's turn right. to the show now, Mary. Power Book 2 Ghost. You play a ruthless drug dealer. Now, help us. Is there much you can relate to this character and how? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I, in the neighborhood I grew up in, you know, the inner cities, the projects, there's always a Monet. There's 10 Monets. I grew up, um, most of my friends were Monets. Um, but most of all, a lot of our mothers are Monets, single parent mothers trying to raise their children and, you know, trying to survive. So um, I, my friends, my mom, my sisters, you know, like a lot of every woman I, every woman I know is a Monet. She's a boss and she's always trying to survive in a male dominated world. And what makes her ruthless is the fact that she has to take care of her family. That's what makes her ruthless. Mm. Mm. She is a boss and you are a boss too. And we got another boss right here, 50. So you're the executive producer on this show. It's the sequel uh, to the hit Power that that just ended. What was it like to bring Mary onto this one? You, you must've been really excited to be working with her. Yeah, it was really exciting. Like for me, I, I knew Mary was gonna stop in New York on tour. And I set up for her to meet with Courtney to just, just sit down and talk about, you know, possible characters or something that we could do on the show. And this is while Power was still still running and then it evolved and it developed. And I, I'm just, I was so excited that we could, could make it happen. Like she'll tell you, I called her like 50,000 times, like Mary, please, you understand, we need this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a quick look now at Power Book Two. What's going on out here? Back up, back up, back up. Damn. Get inside, Zeke. Oh, he can handle himself. And you too valuable to the family. Go ahead. This will be squashed in a minute. Wow. Now you, 50, you actually killed your own character off. Uh, so you're not going to be back for this season. And it's going to center around the son of Ghost. And a, a lot of people felt some kind of way about now the son of Ghost. They, they weren't feeling him a lot. So how, how did this storyline come, come along? And do you think all those fans from power are, are definitely going to follow along? I think, I think they're going to change when they see you love something. It changes, like, cause my character Kanan, they couldn't stand him either yeah. until he, he actually developed this relationship with Tyree. Huh? So you know, later they'll they'll find a way to really appreciate Tyree's character. But the way the way when I watch it, the intensity of the show is is great, man. That's one foot in the university, the other foot in the street for Tyreek, and they get a chance to see like it's it's a complex story put together very well and about the street life. So that I think that they'll get into it and really appreciate it. It's the next level for power. It's the next level uh, in that Method Man is also yeah. part of the show. Mary, I know you've worked with uh, with both Curtis and Method Man on music before. Any chance we might see a three-way collab there? Well, <laughs> when I began to see this soundtrack for Ghost 50. <laughs> yeah, we could possibly, Absolutely. possibly. <laughs> you possibly hear something from us because we, we may finish the soundtrack for the actual, for the show. All right. Wait a minute. Y'all, so y'all have been a little coy there. Something's going on. So. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a tease. That's what we call that. <laughs> it is. But yes, Mary, yeah. Mary and Method Man, you all actually won a Grammy together all those years ago for, uh, for a duo. So to see you all on screen uh, together like this is really cool. We're fans of the show, of course. Looking forward to this next chapter. So, so Larry... You remember hearing it here first that I said everybody that claimed they weren't going to watch this show because Ghost is gone. Stop lying. If you write a good script right. with these characters, you're still going to have the same magic that that show had. And listening to what they just had to say, I already said they was going to have to do something to make you fall in love with Tariq's character. So 50 Cent is saying one foot in the street, one foot in regular life. And we've seen Simon is back in this show, meaning he's probably going to take Tariq under his wing. And that's going to be Tariq's out of the street life. And Mary J. Blige is going to be helping Tariq with the street life. How do you feel about that synopsis, Larry? Do you think I'm hitting the home run? Um, <clears throat> I'll be honest with you, man. It, maybe it's just the timing of it all, mm -hmm. but... I really don't like where this I don't I really don't like the message that this show is sending out to the world because you have 
you know, he's talking about you have this black man who's got one foot in the university and the other one in the street. And you have Trump up there in real life basically trying to tell white people out in the suburbs, you need to be afraid of these black folks. They're all they're criminals. They're violent. They're coming for you. They're, you know, they send they used to say that shit all the time. They're coming for your daughters. They're going to come. They're going to come rape your daughters and your and your mothers and, and everybody else. And he's sending that same sort of message out there that black people are violent and they're coming for you. And 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 they're making a show that's basically showing this young man who comes from money. He's in a university and he's still a violent drug dealing thug. And it's just sending a message out there to people saying, look, no matter what you do, no matter what they no matter what they become, they're always just going to be violent thugs. It doesn't matter if they're educated. It doesn't matter if they have money. It doesn't matter. They're still just going to be criminals and thugs. And we need to treat them like that. Hmm. I mean, it's just I mean, it's just a horrible message to send right now. Those are the type of messages you can send when there's a sense of equality, when people have a, a more balanced sense of what of who and what black people are. Right now is not the time for this. Well, I feel you, but I will say this. Could he not also be sending the message that because of there's no equality for black people, in order for us to get to the next echelon, this is the shit we got to go through from dealing with racism, from dealing with nepotism that white people have, and also could he be showing just how crooked white people are with Simon being crooked and doing cocaine and cheating on his wife as well? I'm going to say no, because here's the problem. White people represent themselves. Black people represent all of us. And that's the way it is. If I go out there today and I do some horrific shit, it's going to reflect bad on all of us as black people. They're going to talk about this black YouTuber went out there and did some heinous shit and it's going to be on all of us. We're all going to get blamed for it. And so when some white person goes out, like this white person out there that shot those people yesterday, I don't hear anybody out there talking about that all white people are to blame for this. There's, there's no there's no talk about there's no talk about I've, I'll, in fact the only person today I, I heard Anderson Cooper call him a white teenager he's the only, that's the only time I even heard anybody refer to his race but if he was a black person it would that would have been that would have been the lead thing black person did this black person mm -hmm. did that so no the fact that Simon whatever his name is is up there doing shit doesn't mean anything because all he represents is himself he's just a bad he's just a corrupt businessman to people. He's not he's not a he's not, a, he's not a, a representative of his race. He's just a corrupt businessman. But Tariq, Tariq is a young black man. Tariq is going to be a representative of his race. And people are going to see that and they're going to say, see, even when you even when they come from money, even when they have the best education they can get, even when they have everything in life, they're still going to resort back to criminality and violence because that is what's at their nature. That's what they're going to see when they watch this. And, they're, and then they're going to say, see, this is what they're celebrating. This is what they're promoting to their own people. This is what they're showing them. This is what they want them to, to understand. This is the wrong time for this show. I know all, I know, I know everybody out there that wants, that loves power wants to see this. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't think this show should come out right now. It's just the wrong time. It sends the wrong message. All right. So are you going to not watch it? I'm I'm not sure if I am to be perfectly honest with you, man. I, I mean, I want to support I want to support brothers and sisters out there, but I honestly believe it's the wrong time. Well, hopefully, during the run of power, everybody takes this this energy we have, keep protesting, and at least start phase one and get Trump ass out the White House. Let's just hope we can get that going. And if you continue to follow this channel, you know we go live and we're going to keep the heat on as we review these TV shows and everything of that nature.